You've probably already seen these very particular old planes that instead of having a single tail like conventional planes, these simply double down and have two tails. These planes have been present for literally all of aviation history, from the first airplane prototypes to the present. But why did these planes exist? What's the point of having two tails on your plane? And also, why despite being a design widely used up to the Cold War, does it seem to have simply disappeared out of nowhere? Today, as is customary on this channel, we will answer all these questions. And very likely this video will leave you truly engrossed. As I mentioned, this two-tailed airplane design is in fact one of the original designs in aviation. Many of the first airplane prototypes, which were basically motorized kites, had two tails. The first airplane used by England was the Bristol Boss Kite, which was introduced in 1910. At first, using a two-tail structure was very beneficial because kite-type airplanes were basically made of wood and cloth. The double-tail structure gave a lot of resistance to the airplanes. However, shortly before World War I, monocoque fuselages began to be used, resulting in more resistant airplanes and therefore a simpler single-tail design. However, twin-tail airplanes with monocoque fuselages began to be made, resulting in even more resistant airplanes. The first successful airplane of this type was probably the German Ego Cone and the C1 and C2, which had a wooden monocoque fuselage. At the beginning of World War I, most airplanes had the engine in front. This was a problem because a machine gun could not be placed in front of the plane, as firing would damage the propeller blades. Midway through the conflict, this problem was solved by simply synchronizing the propeller with the machine gun. However, before this solution, a very popular solution to this problem was to make twin-tail airplanes to place the engine between the tails, or in areas like the wings. This way, the propeller did not obstruct the machine gun and allowed for a gunner in the front part of the plane. Airplanes like the Vickers FB-5 Goombas had an engine between the tails and were twin-tail airplanes. Also, the heavy bombers of the Italian Caproni series had two engines on the wing. These are two great examples of this. After World War I, twin-tail airplanes would be lost for a while and would not become relevant again until World War II, where many quite interesting designs using this concept would emerge. The Germans, for example, would create engineless gliders to transport cargo and soldiers in a very efficient way. Gliders like the Gotag Go 242 are an excellent example of this. They had a rear door between the tails, something that was absurdly beneficial for releasing cargo in the air. But probably one of the greatest exponents of twin-tail airplanes in World War II are the P-38s, American Lightnings. These had two tails because the engine's turbochargers made them too long, so the P-38's tails contained part of the engine. These were very successful. 10,037 of these were produced, being one of the most famous, fast, and powerful fighters of the time, contrary to what you would think of the appearance of jet engines. The appearance of jet engines did not make these planes disappear. They started many more twin-tail planes. At first, the efficiency of jet engines was hindered by the long intake and exhaust ducts they needed when put on single-tail planes. A very ingenious solution was to use the twin-tail design to shorten the exhaust ducts to a minimum. This way, many amazing designs emerged, like the Haliband DH-100 Vampire or also like the Haliband Venom, which were truly unique and impressive fighter planes. The Vampire was developed in the Second World War and was introduced in 1949, and this would be retired in the 60s. Mexicans should know the Haliband Vampire well as they were used by Mexico during the 60s. 3,268 vampires were produced. There were also transport planes that used this concept to take advantage of more space and have larger rear doors like the American Fire Shield C-119 Flying Boxcar, which was introduced in 1949 and ended up being retired in 1955 to be replaced by the C-130 Hercules at the beginning of the Cold War. Despite the fact that twin-tail planes presented many quite beneficial advantages, these were quickly displaced by single-tail planes as simply the advantages they presented were not too useful compared to the great disadvantages they presented. 
One of the advantages these planes had was the great ease they gave when mounting engines. Historically, whenever engineers had problems with the assembly or position of the engine in an airplane, they opted to design the aircraft with a double tail. As a double tail aircraft gave much more space to the airplane for the engine, it also left the space free in the center of the airplane to mount other components like antennas. Very popular in today's drones with larger rear doors in the case of cargo planes. And precisely, this was another great advantage of double tail planes. These allowed to have larger rear doors in smaller planes. A great example of this is the Armstrong Whitworth AW660. Argosy, which was an English cargo plane similar to the C-130 Hercules, but with a double tail. And the last advantage that double tail planes had was their greater stability and performance compared to conventional planes. Double tail planes are usually more stable than conventional planes. The tails provide a larger contact surface with the air, making the forces distribute more evenly over the plane. This makes the plane much easier to control in addition to this structure significantly reducing vibrations in flight, all these advantages have led to many double-tail designs throughout the history of civil and military aviation. However, these also had quite remarkable major disadvantages, which made this type of plane simply disappear and could not adapt to the times of supersonic fighters and bombers. A big disadvantage was that they required more laborious manufacturing, this was not advantageous for mass production. Both arms had to be well aligned in an exact position with the exact weight and well balanced, so during manufacturing it required additional engineering considerations. This was a problem in the times of World War II where mass production was a necessity due to the high demand for military equipment. But the most important disadvantage was the maximum speed that these could reach. These planes, by offering a larger contact surface with the air, made greater aerodynamic resistance, which limited the maximum speed that these could reach. And if you remember the video that Armopedia copied me about how the fighters were getting slower, today we talk about how at the beginning of the Cold War, the main focus of aeronautical development was to make planes faster. In this way, really impressive planes emerged like the MiG-25 Foxbat that could reach speeds of up to Mach 3.2 without disassembling in the air. Do you remember we talked about how twin-tail designs made it easier to place the engines? Well, this does not apply to jet engine planes. Making jet engines faster also meant they took up more and more space. This was a problem in twin-tail plane designs as the useful space where the engine goes is very limited, considering it has to carry the cockpit as well as fuel tanks and weaponry. Planes like the Hullivan Vampire simply didn't fit with the growing demand for supersonic jets of the 50s and 60s. Twin-tail planes also failed as cargo planes simply because conventional cargo planes proved to be much better. The rear door, which was the main advantage of twin-tail cargo planes, was also hindered by the tail itself. Also, other conventional cargo plane designs solved the rear door problem simply by placing the plane's tail higher, like in the C-130 Hercules. Currently, there is no modern military aircraft that uses this concept, at least not manned. There are many drones that benefit from the great stability offered by the twin-tail design. Drones like the Turkish Bayaktar TB2 or the Israeli Israel Aerospace Industries. Heron used this concept to operate, and like these, many more drone models of all sizes use a twin tail, so this concept, instead of disappearing, just moved to another aeronautical branch. Remember, this is Guns Club. Thank you so much for watching this video, and see you in the next one, of course.